Uh, Minister Sikotic, it's an honor to be able to interview you in this forum and welcome to the Institute of, for Cultural Diplomacy. After more than 12 years of peace and relative stability in the region of the Balkans, can you see considerable a major step forward in the direction of increasing regional integration and interaction, or reasons for conflicts and tension are still present within the different actors in the regions? Well, I believe and hope that the Western Balkans and the Balkans as a whole move towards further integration, towards family of progressive and democratic nations, not towards instabilities, clashes, conflicts or resumption of war. There is always chance to make the war, but I believe at the present time the fuel of war is gone, so I expect a peaceful uh, time ahead of us, characterized by development as, as the major or prevailing process, whereas I still see a lot of impediments and it's not going to be that easy and that fast. The next question is uh, regarding the, na the multicultural nature of Bosnia. The Institute for Cultural Diplomacy is currently conducting a research analysis on different states' multiculturalism in Europe. And Bosnia and Herzegovina represents a very interest, interesting case regarding this matter. As an active member in the current government, what do you think could be the more effective policies to be implemented in your country in order to improve the coexistence between different religious and ethnic groups, especially between Christians and Muslims? I believe Bosnia and Herzegovina represents a place or a point at the world globe where the four major civilizations or religions meet together, where territories inhabited by those different people meet together. And the long tradition of Bosnia is suggesting that this peaceful and harmonious cohabitation of differences is not just possible, but a desirable and normal state of affairs. I was responsible for the defense reform for five years, and the reform was about putting together three different militaries that used to fight each other during the war. Many people believed it was impossible, but we made, made it possible through the implementation with gradual increase of mutual confidence and trust with aims of the form designed to satisfy expectations of every ethnic groups of collective level and every individual on, on, on the personal level. And with progress, people saw that they had a chance. And everyone likes to be part of a success. And we create an environment where people could feel a chance for both personal and collective success. And then we coined an expression, a concept of multipolar loyalty. That concept meant that a people, a single person, could simultaneously be loyal to the state, to different ethnic group, different entity, different political party, different region, without these <coughs> loyalties conflicting each other. And this is the essence of multicultural diplomacy or diplomatic pluralism if you or cultural pluralism if, if you want to to use that expression. And this was the situation where we learned that by effective state level structures we moved the whole country, all ethnic groups and every single citizen, every single individual of the country closer towards NATO and EU, making everyone better off. And then all the people realized that this was good for everyone. Zero-sum game, it is not a model yeah. to, to, to follow, it's not a way to go. But this win-win approach, or win-win-win, yeah. because we have got all different, different religions and, and ethnic groups, where everyone saw, uh, was benefiting from the process, was a very positive approach. But let me make one important remark. It is not so easy to prove that you are working on a successful project until you win, until you succeed. And it's not even um, 
easy to convince all the people that they will all benefit from the process that is going to be successful because people are suspicious that somewhere within the construction of the mechanism there is a hidden obstacle or kind of mechanism that would disfranchise them so you've got to use highest possible level of transparency trust building mechanisms um, double or triple standards of control allowing everyone to 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 follow every single step and check every sensitive element of the process by that kind of approach you can really convince i'm speaking about i'm speaking about tough environment where you have got a, a strong clash between different differences and you you have got to use tough instruments in those tough situations in order to convince people you are doing the right thing but if you are dedicated if you trust what you are doing if you share it with other people who are doing it with you and if you are committed and willing to do everything that it takes to to make it happen you can succeed okay. thank you thank you very much i'm going to take the microphone um and follow up to that um the, for their cultural, ethnic and religious diversity, the Balkans represent a unique arena to implement effective practices of cultural diplomacy, as you described. Mm -hmm. And the ICD itself is looking forward to for further collaborate with all the governments of the regions. To what extent do you believe that such practices can foster the already ongoing process of peace and stability development in the region? Um. Well, peace, stability, uh, security, human rights, democracy uh, are aspects of uh, the same situation that is prerequisite for development, progress and way forward. Uh, for regions that are characterized by diversities, in ethnic, religious, and language, cultural, and other terms. The concept of uh, harmonizing those diversities into one functional mechanism is the only way to go. Borders and walls between civilizations is not an approach that can lead us to the future. The future of the world is in integrations. The integrations of differences is something that people should be adjusted to and they should rather think of how to do it, not whether they have got to do it. I believe the long history of the Balkans <coughs> is a good example of it. Whenever people harmonize their relationship, working on the best mechanisms of cooperation, instead of trying uh, to pursue some exclusiveness concepts, uh, the Balkans was doing well. Whenever they try to expand the presence and influence of one ethnic group, one religion group, one civilizational concept or whatever, upon the expense of the others, the Balkans and the rest of the world was suffering from troubles and nobody benefited from those times. Thank you very much. Um, as a closing question, Bosnia and Herzegovina have applied for the EU membership and negotiations are currently in, a on, in an ongoing process. Are you hopeful regarding a future and access, access to, of your country with, within the Union? Well, on the, on the long run, I am. <laughs> uh, at the present moment, we have got some political uh, gaps that are not so easy to breach and cover. Uh, Clausewitz used to argue that war is nothing else but, else but extension of politics by other means. Yeah. Clausewitz. Yeah. We now have politics in Bosnia that are different politics, mm -hmm. that are extension by war by some other means. Okay. Uh, namely, there are some politics that did not achieve some of the wartime goals 
by use of force. They are trying to do it now by politics that makes the whole situation very complex and fragile. But we have got to leave it out. And I guess some smarter and more responsible generations of politicians will come pick over from the current generation of politi politicians and progress faster. I'm, I'm not saying that um, the current politicians are irresponsible, but at every concept of solution, there is a kind of weak link that does not hold the whole, the whole pressure and strength of the environment. So we need more responsible approach, more effective one, one and even a simpler, simpler one.